in Onyx. So rather than take up class time to go through it, I'm happy to go through it if you want. I just thought I'd make a video to chat with you a little bit about it. You'll find the interface is pretty similar to Onyx. And again, we'll revisit those issues that you can think about your data in standardized form, in deviation score form, or in the adjoined score form. Let's take a look. <clears throat> so. so we can bring up Amos. It'll be underneath the IBM uh, software part. If you only see IBM statistics, that means you need to go to campus computing and get the Amos package. It comes licensed with it. It doesn't cost you anything additionally. And the thing we want to play with is the graphics interface, IBM SPSS 26 graphics. And you'll find that that launches. And similar to the Onyx system, uh, we'll be reading in our data and drawing a diagram. <clears throat> I want to draw your attention over here to the layout of Amos. On the right hand side, you'll see kind of a large whiteboard. That's where you're going to put your diagram. On the left hand side are things that will help you draw the diagram, move things around, specify what kind of analysis you want to do, maybe make the diagram larger or smaller. And in the middle are the options that deal with whether you're looking at how you're specifying the model versus the output. We haven't drawn anything yet, so that's grayed out. <clears throat> whether you're looking at only one group of people or maybe multiple groups, maybe males and females. And whether you're examining only one model or maybe a, a bunch of models. And down here in the middle, whether you're looking at unstandardized decimates, the deviation or a joint score matrix, or whether you're looking at the standardized values. So let's come in and read in our data set. Underneath the file tab in the upper left hand corner, we'll see data files. And you can select that and then select wherever it is your data are. We'll use exactly the same data as we had before and read that data in. Now, Onyx, I'm sorry, Amos will take in SPSS files. Uh, Excel files, comment limited, tab limited files. So it has a little bit more variety than Onyx has. It's always a good idea if you're looking at the data to type the view data, just to make sure that these numbers have been read incorrectly. I kind of quickly zoom down to make sure that I've got as many observations as I think I ought to have. And that the data appear to read in correctly. A little bit of navigation here. Sometimes you'll be doing analyses where you might want to have men and women, but they're in one file. That's what this grouping variable is for. So now that we've read our data in, we can type OK. And we can now come in and start, just as with Onyx, drawing in our variables and putting them in a diagram. So look over here on the left-hand side. And if you hover over these things, you'll see a brief little example of explanation of what each little atom is for. You'll see it lists the variables that are in the model, and the one we want is right next to it, lists the variables in the data set. And we can left click on that, and we'll see, ta-da, here are our four variables that we have. And if we wanted to do, just for interest's sake, a model that looks at variables one, two, and three, we can click and left drag those over to our diagram. And you'll notice that it's not going to be like Onyx. I can't right click and draw an arrow here. I need to come over here to the left hand side and click on that single headed arrow that says draw paths. So selecting that box and making it shaded, I can start at this one and right click, sorry, and, and drag on over to that by left clicking. I can do the same for WISC2. Similarly, if I want to put a covariance in the data set, I select this double headed arrow. And I will then click from here to here, and that will draw the diagram for me. I can make this a little bit bigger, and that's probably a good idea. I can move this over a little bit uh, by writing the bar over here. Now I have 
Uh, you'll notice that I don't have slings, double-headed arrows, on the predictor variables. This is because Amos does not draw those in, but they're understood, and I'll show you how to look at those parameters in a moment. You'll also notice there's not a sling going on at the, at the dependent variable. One difference in Amos that's different than Onyx is that in order for you to have an error variance, you need to add an error variable explicitly. And that's our third option over here, a little rectangle with a circle on top of it. I can click that to highlight it, and then left click, and it will add the error term for me. I can repeatedly click that, and it will move it around to where I might want to see things. So at this point, I'm really kind of done. The only problems are if I hit the Run button at this point, it's not going to run because I haven't given this variable a name. And for the purposes of the analysis, the parameters will be estimated here, but they don't have any names. And I think that as you're beginning structural equation modeling, it's always kind of a good idea to at least see a name where a parameter exists. So in order to give it a name, I could either double click on it and assign it a name, or I can come over here to the plugins thing that's right next to the help, select that, and then select name on observed variables. And it has now given that error term the name E1. If you had a really large diagram, it might be a good idea to just use that and it will name all of the error terms that are present in your model. Similarly, uh, I might want to name the parameters. Now by default, Amos decides to analyze your data in deviation score mode. So if you want to have the mean in the model, you're going to have to explicitly say so. And down here, you'll see an abacus, and next to it, an abacus with four little, six little colors on it. Left click on that, <clears throat> and you'll see the analysis properties tab. And underneath the estimation tab, you want to check the estimate means and intercepts. The other thing that Amos does is, unless you tell it explicitly, it's not going to give you standardized estimates. So we need to come over here to the output statement, select that, and come down here and select standardized estimates. Um, if you want, you can also ask for squared multiple correlations here, for example. We're now in a position where we can name our parameters. And if you'd like, you could you know, left click on this and put some names in here. Alternatively, if you're lazy, you can come up to the plugin set section and say name parameters. And you'll see some options for a prefix. So C's would be a covariance, W's might be a regression weight. Why don't we use the word B for that? V is for variance, M is for any means, I is for any intercepts. So if we select all of these things, this is what we'll see. Um, this diagram is a little ugly. Well, this is kind of one of the features that people really like to see. I can select everything in my diagram. And there's this little thing called a magic wand over here, and that will touch things up and make things look a little better. I select the magic wand and right click and then adjust things. That's a little nice. I'm now in a position to run my model. So I'm going to save this file. And let's call this to predictor regression model. <clears throat> To execute the model, I now click the little abacus, and it does a bunch of things in the background, and it gives me my numbers. You'll notice here, it's giving me, instead of a triangle that points at everything, means are listed as the first number next to the box, and the variances are the second number. So I can tell from this diagram that the mean of WISC time one is 18.78, and WISC time two is 2655. 
and the intercept is 1188. So these two numbers, 41 and 62, represent the unstandardized regression weights. 1188 is the intercept. The error variance, that is the variance of the residual scores, is 14.18, and the covariance is 37.44. If I want to see the standardized estimates, I come down here and select standardized estimates, and that will show me the standardized values. Over here, this number represents the squared multiple correlation for WISC-3 based on WISC-1 and WISC-2. Now, if you want, you can also see a kind of Excel spreadsheet version of the same solution. Over here, you'll see something that looks a little bit like a spreadsheet. You can double click on that, and that will bring your analysis up. And we'll go through this in detail when we actually start doing structural models, but this is just a regression model. It will show me when I ran it, what the title of it, of it is, how many people I have in my sample size, how many endogenous variables I have, how many exogenous variables, how many unobserved variables I have in the data, how many parameters I'm estimating, did it run, how many degrees of freedom, we'll get into that in more detail later. What you're interested in down here are the estimates. And you see here the unstandardized regression weights that we just saw on the diagram. <coughs> the standard errors for that, and these approximate Zs, it's called a critical ratio inside of Amos, but it's a wall test, and the name of the parameter. Down here are the standardized regression weights that we saw on the diagram. Here are the means for the predictors, and down here is the intercept, the covariance, and the correlation. Here are our variances, and this is the error variance, and down here is the squared multiple correlation. Now the rest of this printout, the minimization history, the model fit, and so forth, those are all things that we'll be talking about later on. But at the moment, I just wanted to introduce this particular program to you in case you were interested in playing with it. That's all there is. Let me know if you have any questions.